Welcome to the Health Workforce Technical Assistance Center's webinar series. This webinar is entitled, Using Medicaid Claims Data to Calculate Capacity for Federal Shortage Designations, Part 2. And it was presented by Eric Tour on June 21st, 2017. Hello, my name is David Armstrong, and I'm the Director of the Health Workforce Technical Assistance Center. Today's presentation is the second part of a two-part series on using Medicaid claims data to calculate capacity for federally designated shortage areas. But before we get started, I'd like to announce an upcoming event. On August 16th, we are going to have a webinar that focuses on integrating data into the SDMS, and Eric Tor. Our presenter for today's webinar will also be involved in that event. But with that said, I'm going to go ahead and turn the event over to Eric. For those of you who don't know, Eric is a senior health services consultant at John Snow Inc. Eric? Oh, thanks, David. I'm going to share uh, my screen. So hopefully, everyone can see this. And this is the second part. So we're, I'm sort of calling this part two of a series. And the first, the first one was done last month, and it's sort of focused on sort of an overview of the whole Medicaid claims data um, process, from you know how to initially request the data and what to initially request from Medicaid, and then a brief overview of what I'm going to go in more depth than today, which is the analysis of of that data once you've got it, and then it sort of bridges into the concept, which I think is obviously the end point of this for designation purposes, how to merge this data and some other data into the SDMS system using the upload functions, you know, which, which is uh, it, itself a completely separate process. And that's sort of what the presentation in August is, is going to focus on a couple of different ways that, that that's been approached you know, from, by, by me and also by uh, another group. So with that said, I'm just going to do a couple of slides and then we'll dive into it. Excuse me, this is David. I know we discussed this a little bit ahead of time, but should we just go ahead and unmute the phones at this time since we have a small group? Yeah, good idea. Yes, absolutely. Um, sorry, I forgot to mention that. And, oh, and, that's fine. You know, My if bad. There, if there's noise in the background, just mute on your end, but, but hopefully it'll be quiet enough. That way folks can chime in whenever they want. All right, here um, we go. You, and so this is this is a slide largely um, taken from the last presentation. So again, I refer back to that presentation um, for details on kind of how to specify the claims extract. This is sort of picking up once you've sort of got claims data from Medicaid by you know by whatever mechanism you you, you acquired it. So the trick then is. If, if you go through the process that I had defined before, you're going to end up with a lot of claims, not all of which you want to be counting. The key is separating out the non-primary care claims, so, so ones that were done by non-primary care providers, and then also you'd want to separate out the ones that were done by non-physicians, just because those are those are not counted. And the uh, the process then also involves what I say connecting to the full MPI listing of providers. And that sort of gets into that next piece that I mentioned, but it has a lot to do with what's in the SDMS versus what you're going to find in the claims. And the, the key is obviously to get the capacity you find, valid capacity, into SDMS. So SDMS will not have any of the organizational level claims, um, and I can explain that in a little more detail when we get into it. And it probably won't have uh, uh, some or even in some cases many of the individuals that you need who are clearly showing up as providing care in your state. What, what, the way I do it is I work toward developing a classification of claims into basically four categories, primary care only by an individual provider, primary care only by an organization, so that would be an organization that I'm seeing as providing only primary care. PC mixed organizations, which are organizations that appear to have um, classifications that include primary care but might not be exclusively primary care. And then this last group, which I call as an option, um, individuals that also appear to have mixed specialty or capacity. And, and the reason I call that optional is that adds a lot of additional work. So, so in a statewide analysis, what happens a lot of times if you bring this group in, you end up with a lot of specialists. 
and I can show you why that might be. But, but again, I, I still create this category. It's just a question of what, what you do with it in the end. So in advance of this presentation, you, you should have gotten a demo data file. So that's a file that I created. It's a blinded file based on originally uh, portions of some real data. It's in an MS Access format. And so I know in the pre-registration, some people said they did or did not have access. So what I'd say is if you have it and you want to follow along in the background, just have that, op that file open in the background. If not, it's fine. You know, I'll go through what I, what I do with that, to, and, and then you can sort of take that back afterward and look at it or take it to some technical folks in your office and have them look at it. Any platform can be used. I, I suggest access because more or less everyone can get it because it's part of the office suite even if you don't initially install it. And, and the, the other thing that, that's in that table, besides just the logic that we'll go over, is some lookup tables. And I'll explain what's in each of these real briefly, and then we'll, we'll look at those tables. And, I, and I'll show you some of these lookup tables, because they're already created, might save you some steps down the line, regardless of sort of how you approach things. So what's in, what's in that file, and, I, and I'll look at these in depth, but I'm just going to quickly state, this Medicaid primary care claims raw um, is what I call it, so unanalyzed is, is what that means. As I said in the previous presentation, aggregated to MPI and address. And I'll show you, it's not necessarily true that yours will come aggregated, but it's pretty easy to aggregate them to, to the MPI number and the address. The CPT codes that are also in that previous presentation are, are predefined. So these would have been ones that we either gave to Medicaid or that if we wrote our own query in Medicaid's data, we would have defined. So that's already been taken care of in terms of getting just sort of office visit type codes. There's an NPI file. It's not the full, it's not the full file. It's an extract, but it's taken from the national MPI data, the, the links in the previous presentation. The license list, again, this is optional, um, but I wanted to make a point with that, so I'll, I'll show that to you when we get into it. This is an example of, a, of an NPI linked or an MPI inclusive uh, license list. So the, license, the, the Medicaid, sorry, uh, Medical Board has collected the MPI number. And then the SDMS download is the final thing we'll look at. So it's a sample of data coming down from, the, from that state's SDMS file, the raw file, before it's been updated. And so you can sort of see some of the issues there. The lookup tables that I'm going to go into are a set of taxonomy codes, which I use to define what, what I want to include as medica medical primary care. There's also, and again, they're just for reference because I'm not going to run through dental and, and mental health, or I may run through mental health at the end if we have a little bit of time. But I'll show you how to sort of swap those out and very quickly adapt this all this work to the other the other disciplines. Um, and then the taxonomy code import is something where I've pulled down all the meanings of all the taxonomies and loaded them. So, you know, when you see those cryptic numbers in, in, in SDMS or in the MPI, this helps you translate them into the real world language. So the analytic steps that we're talking about uh, using the taxonomy code and type. So this, this is, and I'll explain that. So it's not using other indicators. So first you select the claims with an NPI matching the primary care taxonomies, and that's what I call this PC inclusive query, and I'll show you why it's called inclusive. And then I do sort of a reverse query, ones that have at least something that is not in the primary care taxonomy, so it's a, a, a non-PC, also inclusive file. And then basically using the MPI linkage, I can separate them out into individuals and organizations. You know, and, and then I know what to do after the fact. So, so basically, providers that are, are mixed require additional follow-up. Providers should also say that are organizational require probably some additional follow-up, or potentially do. This is a schematic that I showed um, in, in the previous training, and I'm just putting it up here again. So on the left, you have a query, which I'm going to show you, that defines how you get the primary care inclusive claims, on the right is primary care non-inclusive claims, and then basically you just run those two tables or two queries against each other and you get your results. That's basically all I'm going to show today. It might look a little more complicated when I get into it, but that's basically the concept that we're talking about here. And 
it's you know it's the details behind that, but basically it's a very simple it's a very simple thing once you've got the the claims from Medicaid. What I then do is I geocode these, so you can see, you know, this is just an example map overlaid. The the colors represent the level of low income because obviously this can only be used in low income. So anything that's green is somewhere below. Uh, below 30% low income, anywhere that's red or orange or yellow is somewhere above 30%. So it helps me be able to see, you know, where might I be able to carve out a service area that will meet the 30% requirement because it's no use trying to do the Medicaid. Even if there's a bunch over here, you can see this is all, the whole area is, is below 30% low income. So there's no way I can make a viable service area there. Whereas up here, you know, a lot more possible here, more possible maybe even here. So it, it's useful in both ways. And you can see, you know, again, the, the individual Medicaid providers, there's a lot of them. Some of them are these organization, but they're only primary care, so that's pretty easy. And then there's these question mark ones, you know, that might require more consideration. This I'll come back to, but I'll, I'll just read it before I get into the presentation. This is also from the previous slideshow. I do recommend while you're going through this process to do some integrity checking. Look to see what you've got. Make sure you understand it. Make sure it seems reasonable. I would say it's as often as not that when I first get the Medicaid data, there's something seriously wrong with it that requires me to follow up with Medicaid and, and find out what's going on. These quick checks, you know, compare the total once you're done with the analysis to the number of enrollees. See if the number of claims seems reasonable. You know, if it's sort of less than two or more than, you know, three and a half or something like that, I'd say it's probably out of range. You know, I've definitely seen places where it's come out less than one. And that, you know, not everyone uses primary care, but it should not be less than one for all your, obviously, enrollees. I look at the one places with the highest counts to make sure that they seem reasonable and that the one thing that will happen is not a billing office compared to recent low-income HIPSAs to see whether I'm getting something like those results. And also check to see if there's multiple addresses. There should be multiple addresses. A lot of Medicaid files will not have them. Um, the example I have does not have them. So you just know going into it if that's the case. They're not collecting the individual site addresses that they're billing from. And that's too bad when it happens, but it, it, it is still usable data, but it means you, you may be not differentiating between the sites completely. So I'm not going to do discussion or presentation. I'm going to switch over to this demo file. Okay, so looking at these files, I'm just going to really quickly look in each file category so folks are familiar. And again, if you want to follow along with what I'm doing, that's fine. This, this should match what you've got. So this Medicaid claims file, if I look in here, it's really pretty simple. There's even more information in here than, than you need. The structure would be very similar for the dental and mental health claims extracts that you would get. The only difference is behind the scenes, the, the CPT codes that you requested might be different. So this is based on the CPT codes that define a medical office visit in general. The other thing that's here, this one that I just expanded, this is not something that's typically required and you may or may not be able to get it from Medicaid, but usually talk to your Medicaid folks and make sure you find out what they can give you. Like this is very helpful to me. It gives me another piece of information. Now hopefully the taxonomy codes are going to help me find out that this is an optometrist and I don't want to count this provider or this might be a specialist and I don't want to count them, but knowing this is useful. Um, anything else that they might know internally about their specialty or their practice setting or anything like that is useful information, so I recommend getting it. Um, we can talk about how you might or might not incorporate it directly. And again, this is the count of claims here. So Medicaid has already pre-aggregated these claims. So for this provider, this MPI number and this address, and, and of course these addresses are, are encrypted, there's 132 claims taking place. If this wasn't the case, I could easily just write a grouping query. If this was just, if there was 132 separate records for, the, for this provider and this address, I'd just write a grouping query and, and I'm not gonna demonstrate every access, aspect of access today, but, but if there's time at the end, if you have questions how that would work, let me know. So all I'd have to do is basically group by MPI number and address and come up with a count of those claims, and now I'm basically at the same point. So it's okay if Medicaid just gives you 
a big, long laundry list raw claims with, as long as they've got MPI and address. Let's take a quick look at this MPI. I'm going to close this. Quick look at this MPI example file. So this is something I extracted from the MPI listing. What I did was I looked in my claims and I found, I grouped up on the MPI number every MPI number that appears in my claims. So it has nothing to do with the SDMS. I'm starting with my claims and grouping up all the MPI numbers that I see. That's what I want to find data on. So if I'm looking at that, what you'll see is for this entity type code, some of these are going to have a two. Like here's an example of a two. An entity type of two means it's an organization. So some of my claims are from organizations. Ideally, you'd be asking for the rendering or servicing provider and trying to get at the actual provider that saw the patient, but a lot of Medicaid files don't have that. And so what you'll get is a collection of claims submitted by an organization. A lot of your FQHCs might show up in this category just because that's how Medicaid pays them. So they're not that interested in who the individual provider is. The other thing you'll notice is the state's not always the same state. So here's a state that, that's different. So again, this would be a provider that would not naturally be in my SDMS file because they're registered somewhere else. So those are, those are a couple of examples. One other thing, when you first get it, I'm just going to briefly put, this is SPSS. So you can't open the national file in Access or, or Excel or anything. It's a, it's a very large file. And here's the view. I mean, there's millions of records in here. But a, a, a simple um, statistics package like SPSS can open it. And you'll see it's got the MPI number. It's got the entity type. And then it has some other attributes about the provider, including stuff that's in SDMS, like the taxonomy codes are listed over here. All I'll say here is you need to get rid of a bunch of stuff, even to open this in Access. There's, here's your 15 different taxonomy codes and four different attributes about each of those. You know, most providers don't go past five at, at most. So you can probably eliminate most of the taxonomy codes. You can definitely eliminate most of these other identifiers. You know, maybe keep some if you want to look and see if there are licenses there. You know, because you have to pare this file down. So that, that's all I'm going to say there. And then you can export it out as a table that, that you can bring into Access because, you know, you've eliminated most of the providers by joining it to the MPI numbers in your file. And again, this is necessary. I'd say more, not more than just useful, it's necessary, because otherwise you don't know anything about the claims from providers that are not in the SDMS system. So if you just join to the SDMS system, you're, you're either going to miss a lot of those provider claims or you're not going to know what to do with them. So I recommend the MPI file. The last table that's in here is this SDMS download. I'm not going to really get into that right now. It's also a piece of what would be what you download from the SDMS system, and, and I'll circle back to that. And then there's lookup tables. So I just want to explain these real quickly. And these are the ones that I think you need to will be reusing and recycling in your work. You know, And certainly let me know if you have questions about what I included or didn't include in these tables, because they sort of drive what you're going to count, at least initially, as, as primary care. So let's look at this Medicaid primary care taxonomy codes. All it is is a simple listing of taxonomy codes. It's on the right side. You can see I've labeled them as individual physician codes, and then a whole bunch that are organizational physician codes. I explained in the previous presentation a little bit about why all the organizational codes. One is some of the codes will actually be billed by organizations, and so you need to include them. The other one is physicians can choose these codes as well. Like one of these, I don't remember which off the top of my head, is a community health center, federally qualified health center code. I see a lot of times the physicians that work there will choose federally qualified health center as one of their taxonomies, even though it's really meant for organizations. So by including all of these, and, and since I don't really care which is which at this phase, I just keep them all in. This is, this is the uh, primary care taxonomy filter. It's the same group, but all I did was kind of merge it with a lookup table that I've got. And now I can see what's there. So you can see it's adult medicine, adolescent medicine, Jerry, those are all your individuals. And down here, you know, and you can argue with some, what some of these might be included. You know, the, this term just primary care is, is an organization type, you know, rural health, you know, federally qualified health center versus community health. So you can see the logic behind including most of these. And 
just to show you how that works, if I go into the, this was the original table that I showed you here, the primary care taxonomy codes, and all I did was join it to this other table that I included, which is the, primary, the taxonomy code import. And this is the lookup table for your taxonomy codes. And it's really handy to have, you know, it's just something I extracted off the web and dumped into a table format. But with this, I'll just open it for a minute if I can find it. It's this table here. It's a big long list, there's 826 records in here. And any taxonomy code you see, um, unless they've been added really recently, will be in this list. And so if I sort of scroll down this list to like the 207 range, you can see a lot of the 207 stuff, like here's family medicine in the 207 listings, you know. But then some of those are ones you'd want to keep, like adolescent medicine as a subcategory. Some are not, like, you know, bariatric medicine or hospital and palliative medicine. So this sort of lets you sift through all these and figure out which ones you've got. And I'll show you how that applies. Okay. So that, this, co this thing down here, the primary care taxonomy code filter, I'll show you, it factors in directly into our analysis later on. It makes it very easy to switch between the primary care discipline and the other disciplines, you know, just by switching out what your claims file is looking at and then also which of these taxonomy code lists. So that's why, again, this PC taxonomy code is this short list of, of codes that I care about, you know, as opposed to everything else. So hopefully that's making sense so far, because that's basically the table structure that, that, I've, that I've shared. Does anyone have any questions before we start looking at how to use them? And certainly chime in. Again, going back to that slide that I showed you before, the first thing I did is I created this, this, this query here, and it's called, well, so I already showed you this query. Let me start off. This PC taxonomy filter. If I show you this, it's just that lookup table now tied to the import so I can see what the, what the name is. Um, it seems pretty simple, but it, it, it becomes a key table on the subsequent queries. There's just one of these. So if I go to primary care inclusive, so this is a query trying to find what I call primary care inclusive. And by primary care inclusive, I mean they're showing one, at least one of those taxonomy codes that, that's in that, that primary care list. But by inclusive, I mean regardless of whether they show other codes that are not primary care. So I'm basically saying you're in as long as you've got at least one primary care looking thing happening. Here's my raw claims file that we looked at. So these are the, these are the records with the number of paid claims by NPI and zip code. This is the key connection. So I go through my MPI lookup. So this, these are the, the matching records out of the national MPI that pertain to the, the claims that I've got. And again, if I, if I just go right to SDMS, I'll miss a lot, and I'll show you that. So I go through the MPI records, pull out, again, fairly simple data. You can include more if you want to. But again, it's the MPI, this entity type, individual organization, and then their taxonomy codes. That's really mostly what you need. So I did three taxonomy codes. You know, you could do more. This PC taxonomy filter, it's just this thing that I showed you a minute ago brought in three times and attached to each of the taxonomy codes. So it's just a lookup. Um, and you can recycle that same uh, query multiple times to look up on each of the different codes that might be included. One little thing about access, this right-hand arrow, if I click here and I say join properties, this I made this what they call a right join or number two join here. Include all records from the MPI lookup table and those records from the PC taxonomy filter one where they're equal. So what that means is I'm going to get everything from here and I'll either get a record here if it exists or null if this code doesn't match one of the ones in my list. So hopefully that makes sense. So all I'm doing is basically looking up their MPI information, finding out what entity type they are, and then trying to match their taxonomy codes to th this list of ones that I said I care about as primary care. So the logic here for each of those codes, and same for one, two, and three, which is as far as I went on this example, is the code is not null for number one, but the description, which is being looked up out of this table, is also not null. So that means it found this code in my lookup table. And so now I'm going to 
get a record, a result from this. If, if, this, if the code is one that's not listed, I'll get null here. So that's why I'm saying this is not null and at the same time the lookup is not null. That means it was found. E each row on here is sort of an or statement and the ones going across are and. So it's this is not null and this is not null or looking at code number two, this is not null and this is not null and then the same thing goes on over here. So hopefully that makes sense. And when I run this, what you'll see is providers that have at least one primary care looking taxonomy code and maybe some other ones. So here's an obstetrician, nothing else. Here's an internal medicine provider and some other code that's not being found in my lookup table. That's why this is blank. So that means this is not a primary care taxonomy code. So this is somebody who's mixed. But I'm including everyone right now. So hopefully that makes sense. Now let me show you an almost identical thing. So this is PC inclusive. The next one to look at is non-PC inclusive. And it looks almost identical. The only difference is the logic right here. So now I'm saying find the records where at least one thing is not primary care. So Here's where the taxonomy code, and again, this is just some logic, because sometimes it comes through as a null, and sometimes it comes through as sort of a slightly different version than X work. But both of these are the same thing. So the, the taxonomy code in the MPI is not null, so they, they listed this taxonomy number one. But the specialty description lookup here is null. So all I did was change the lookup codes to is null instead of is not null. So now I'm finding ones, and you'll see, that have at least one thing that's not primary care. So this first one is not primary care. You know, and it doesn't matter whether they do or don't at this point actually have primary care. So here's internal medicine and something else. It's not getting picked up because of internal medicine, it's getting picked up because of this, which is something else. You know, and, and I'll just show you for an example. Let's let's see who this first person is. This is taxonomy code. If I go into that lookup table that I included, I can just say, show me where this code equals that number. Okay, that first one's a nurse practitioner. That's why they're not getting included. You know, if I took if I took a different one, you might see that, you know, this next one is probably a physician because it's in the 208 range. You know, I'll just do it for example. Oops. Paste that one in there. That's urology. So you can see why both of those ultimately are not going to get included, but for now I've got them in my non-PC inclusive. Does that all make sense? So those are those two upper tables, those two first starting tables that I started with. And I'm going to not, not save that. Let me show you one more thing before I actually get into integrating those two tables. Here's the same PC inclusive table, but I brought my licensure table into it. So everything's the same up to here. But at this point, what I did was I linked my license list. This only works really if you have an MPI in your license list. You don't have to have it for everyone because it can still provide info on some of the records as long as you've got it on some. In this instance, I happen to have them on all my licensed providers. And so what, what this gives me is some more information beyond what the MPI is giving me because that's not always your best source, but it may be your only source. So here I made a list based on what was in the licensure file of, of which specialties I care about. So if I run this, what you'll see is, okay, here's all my providers, and here's what the MPI is telling me. So this is the PC inclusive again. You know, so here's one where the, where the MPI is telling me it's just an obstetrician and gynecologist. If I go over here, that's what the specialty tells me too. If I look down below, here's one where the, the MPI is not telling me it's a primary care provider. But what am I seeing over here? Well, cardiovascular disease and internal medicine. So that's why I picked this one up. So I can change the logic so it's looking for both of these things at the same time. In this case, I'm looking for either or. So I'm trying to find a spot where, like again, this is probably not an, in, uh, an internal medicine, probably a cardiologist. But you can see, you can go down and, and see examples where, like here's pediatrics and adolescent medicine. It's got two specialties. And, and their taxonomy is pediatric. So you can kind of see how that enriches your data source. 
and, and maybe makes it so that you're better distinguishing between those that are, are and are not. So you just have to adapt the logic. If you have a resource like that, I'd recommend using it. But my, dem my demo is not going to assume you have that resource. But I just wanted to include that as an example. So hopefully that makes sense. It's just another version of this uh, PC inclusive, but using the license as well. So now I'm going to show you. So there's a, the rest of these are integration queries. So if you look here, there's PC only individual, there's PC only org, there's PC mixed individual, and there's PC mixed org. I'll show you the PC only individual as an example. Um, so each of these kind of finds a different one of those groups. If I go into the design of this query, you're going to see it looks pretty similar to what we were doing before, but now I've got the I've got my PC inclusive as as my left hand query here, and I'm saying again, you can see the arrow goes in the right direction. It says include everything that's in my PC inclusive claims, but only include the non-inclusive claims if the MPI number matches. And so this lets me differentiate between the ones that have at least some primary care and the ones that have at least some non-primary care, and it's the combination of those two that define things. So here I'm saying, you know, and I just calculated this to say this is going to be my PC-only individual claims. What it's doing is saying the MPI number in this side is null. So if it's not in this file, then this was my non-include, my, my includes anything that's not primary care. So if it's not in here, I know it's only in this left-hand file, so I know it's a PC only. They didn't list any non-primary care taxonomies. And that's kind of the key to this thing. And then, and then this is my entity type. So this is one means an individual, two would mean an organization. So that's how I know this is a primary care only individual provider. You know, and again, if, if I had my specialty codes put in, the same logic would apply. It's just these underlying queries would be different in order to find the groups that I'm looking for. And then the rest of this is just the information that I want, the primary care, the number of claims, the servicing provider type. This is that piece of information from Medicaid that you might or might not have, you know, and then any other information you want about their taxonomy code. So if I run this group, what you'll see is all entity type one, they're all, um, and if I go over to their taxonomies, You'll see they might have more than one taxonomy, but they're all going to be primary care. You know, so here's internal medicine, but in two different states. Here again, internal medicine in two different states. The rest of these fit the description. Sometimes you'll see combinations, like here's pediatrics and internal medicine, but again, only primary care, nothing else. So that's my PC only individual. If I look at my PC mixed individual, if I go over there again, just all primary care type one, if I look at my PC mixed individual, now I've got things that are both. So here's internal medicine and pulmonary disease. Here's pediatrics and pediatrics heme onc. Um, again, this is why I say this group, the mixed PC individuals, might not be worth their effort because most of these folks I think are going to shake out as specialists that are listing their, their original you know, degree or certification along with their, their specialization, you know, but that's not exclusively true. So if you want to sift through this list, you can. So, and this logic, sorry, just to go in, you can see design view here. Now I, the only difference again between that last query that the ones that are PC only is here I'm saying on the non-PC query, I'm saying the MPI number is not null. So it exists here and it exists in this non-PC lookup table. So that means they, they showed up as someone who also has at least something that's not primary care, but they also have something that is primary care. So this means they're mixed. And that's why we call them PC mixed, if that makes sense. So the one thing that's not in my list is specialists. You, you can write logic to get specialists, but again, I'm excluding everything else. So if they're not in one of my four categories, either an individual or an organization, then they're in the all other group. So that includes my nurse practitioners and my PAs and my actual specialists and, you know, and anyone else, chiropractors, you saw some other groups listed there, right? So, so that's why I don't really pay attention to that sort of 
the group I'm excluding. But, you know, if you were in a state that wanted to look at that, you can use similar logic to get at that. Okay? So the one thing I'll say is there's also this PC final consolidated. This is how I've sort of moved toward. I used to do these individually and then, and then integrate them. This one is similar, but instead of doing four separate queries, we just use some if logic to figure out their entity type and their PC status and then calculate this claim category from those. So here I'm saying if entity type code is one, then it's individual, else it's an organization. Here I'm saying, you know, if, you know, what I just showed before, if the MPI in the non-inclusive is null, then it's PC only. So same logic I just showed. But because of that, I can basically run through and get all my four categories together. So it's just simpler to do it that way. And you can see in this example, I included 344,000 claims. And you can see I can sift them out. So I can say, all right, show me just the PC individuals. Oops, PC only individuals. And I can look at that. Let's see. Whereas again, I already sort of showed what the PC mix can do. Like if I look at PC mixed organizations, you'll see, you'll see why that's an important group. So there happens to be in this group that I selected out only two, and luckily I've got this code, so I can kind of tell a little bit more about what they are. One's a community health center, one's an acute outpatient hospital. So if I look over here to see why they got pulled in, okay, the first one is listing themselves as mental health and a federally qualified health center. Not an uncommon grouping. So what they're probably trying to say is we provide both things at this location. So I might need to call and make sure that I'm, that I'm, I'm not picking up mental health office visits um, unnecessarily. For, for, the, for the next one, what you'll see, the one that was an acute care hospital, I'm picking them up because they included this family medicine, so which should be for an individual provider, but they picked it up anyway because they probably felt like, well, we provide family medicine. So this should not be, even be a code they chose, but they did. What I see is emergency medicine, um, also an individual provider code, so mis misidentified, and cardiovascular, also a primary care. So what they're trying to, I think, say is that they're a hospital that has you know, emergency and outpatient care. So I might have to call this organization and find out, do they really do outpatient medicine or not? You know, and, and decide on whether to include them or not. But usually there's fewer of these than, than the others. Um, if I get rid of my filter for a second, I just wanted to show you a couple of other things. Uh, if I sort, oops, uh, if I sort this largest to smallest by number of claims, I've got one group here, which is a hospital licensed health center that literally is over 100,000 of my 300,000 claims. So that's a very important thing. If I didn't pick them up, they'd get missed in the SDMS because you're not going to find this MPI number in, in the SDMS system. So I'm going to have to figure out what's going on. And I, I, the next thing I'll explain sort of how you can apply these claims correctly. Or I might want to call them and say, are these all really primary care claims or are some of these nurse practitioner claims? But I can't tell because you're billing as an organization. Does that make sense? So now I've got my list. So this, these are the providers that I may or may not choose. So if I, if I filtered out and said, I don't, I'm just going to blanket exclude my PC mixed individuals because I think they're mostly specialists, you know, that only brought me down to 332 from whatever it was, somewhere in, in the mid-300,000s before. So it didn't make a whole lot of difference to, to drop those out. But again, they're in there and, you know, do we or don't we want to include them or do we want to look more carefully at them? So that's basically it for your Medicaid analysis. So now when, I, when I'm done with this, if I take my, certainly my PC onlys and I'll have to look more at my PC mixed queries, I've got my count of claims, I've got them at unique addresses, and for the ones that are not organizational, I can, I can apply those directly because they're individuals. So they're, they're either in your SDMS list or they're available in the MPI and should be able to be added. So I'll show one more thing, but I want to make sure because they're only 15 minutes. Does anyone have any questions on what I showed so far? I know I ran through it quickly, so you might need to sort of look at it again after after the fact. Does everyone, did that make sense to everyone? Okay, 
take that as a yes. So here's one quick thing. Um, again, I said I brought this SDMS download in. So this is the SDMS records. You know, and I cut a lot of stuff out, but this is the key information, which is basically discipline, whether they're eligible or ineligible, but I'm leaving them all because I, I, I don't really care at this point, and then their address. That's, that's the key information. The rest, the rest of it, you know, again, when you've got to this point, you've already taken care of the taxonomies. So if I look at this check, and here I'm saying, show me that final consolidated PC. So I'm including the mixed ones as well. You know, may, maybe it would be good to exclude those, but for now I'm just saying I'm going to include everything. Looking at the NPI, if I run this, everything to the left is from my claims data. Everything from here over is from my MPI lookup in the SD or my SDMS lookup, the data in the SDMS. What you can see is more than half of these are not in the SDMS system. Only the records that have something here actually appeared at all in the SDMS system, right? So these would attach directly. The rest of these would not attach directly unless I add them because they're not going to be there. And if I, if I sift out and look just at my organizational claims, you'll see none of those are in here. And that makes sense because they wouldn't be. But what you can see is out of 300 and something thousand claims, this is 200,000 of them. So more than half of the claims are in just these organizations. Again, more than half of those are in, or about half of those are in just one organization. So not including these can be an easy thing to, to miss. And if they're missed, the designations will work better, not worse. So it's not the kind of thing that sort of you would naturally have to investigate or want to investigate. So it's important that folks focus on on making sure that there's a process for the organizations, and also for the provider, individual providers that don't that don't have an MPI in your state, but exist somewhere else in the system. They're real claims, they're real activity in your state, but the, MP, the SDMS system might not find them right away. Um, and the next the next presentation would focus on on those on those kind of things, like how to match that up. And again, you might have hours from a survey. How do you match up the claims with the hours? It's not always true that you're going to show hours and claims in the same spot for various reasons. So, you know, that, that becomes a dilemma um, that has to get dealt with in terms of using the upload correctly. The last, the last thing I'll show, I mentioned this PC taxonomy filter. This is where I tell it what kind of claims I'm interested in. So this one I'm connecting to the medical taxonomy claims. This is the one that I showed you before. It just looks that list up and finds the description. In order to switch this to mental health, and if you go back to my previous presentation, you'll remember I said the issue with mental health is some of their claims are also now allowed to be billed using the primary care CPT codes. That sort of makes mental health a two-part thing. You have to query within the mental health only claims, and you have to query within the primary care claims, but for mental health providers. And so just to show you how quickly this can be done, if I go up here and say, all right, instead of my, my primary care taxonomy codes, I'm going to choose my um, psych taxonomy codes instead. And I'm just going to connect my code here the same way. I'm going to change which table these are coming from. And that's it. Delete my medical one out. Now if I run this query, what you can see is, see how it added organizations like mental health, adult mental health, adolescent and child mental health. It dropped some of the other specialties, so all you've got is psychiatry up at the top here, right? Um, including child and adolescent and geriatric psychiatry. So if I save this, everything else stays exactly the same. I'm just gonna save that query and close it. And I'm gonna go back to my PC inclusive claim here. Everything's the same, I didn't touch this I didn't touch this, um, it's probably slightly misnamed, but um, I'm still querying within my primary care claim. So, and what you'll see is if I look at who I got now, I got my psychiatrists, I got my community behavioral health centers, I still got my FQHCs. So here's the problem, we don't know at the FQHC level. Here's 32,000 claims. These are not all mental health claims. I'm telling you they're mostly medical claims. They might all be medical claims. So this would be, you can't use this directly, but it's an indicator that here's an organization that's getting, that's getting picked up.
and, and, and again, then you'd have to also do something similar on your mental health specifically claims based on those CPT codes. So for, for psychiatry, it's slightly more complicated, but I wanted to highlight just how the structure that we've laid out kind of easily crosswalks just by changing the list of what I call primary care. And I'm going to stop there. I've got like 10 minutes left, and I want to make sure that, that we definitely have time for questions and that I didn't sort of run roughshod over, over everything that we discussed. So does anyone have any thoughts, questions, not sure, not sure how this would apply? Uh, Eric, this is Margaret in Rhode Island. Just, hi, Margaret. Uh, hi. If, so if I understand correctly, the first webinar was about how to extract Medicaid data. This webinar is about how to manage and clean your Medicaid data, and then the next one is going to be how to use the import-export tool to actually put it into SDMS. More or less, yeah. I mean, the, the, okay. first, the first webinar covered sort of the whole process from beginning to end in, ter in terms of asking Medicaid for the data and then sort of a high-level view of what to do, which is what I covered today, once you've got the data, and then a little bit more in-depth about sort of the issues with connecting it to SDMS. This is, this is sort of what we call the data demo because people wanted to see, well, what does that actually mean? How does it play out in, in, you know, in terms of actual data processing? So this was sort of a little more techie-oriented version of how to process the Medicaid claims okay. data to get, to get the stuff that you care about and to get rid of the stuff you don't. And then the next piece, which I think will, will also be with one of the states, was it Wisconsin? Oops. Sorry, David. <laughs> Blanking. Um, I believe it was Illinois, if I'm not it mistaken. It was Illinois. It was Illinois. Yeah. Sorry, yes, it was Illinois. That's correct. You know, that that sort of created a programmed um, interface with their data to sort of manage the claims process and manage the SDMS data in conjunction with their other information. You know, um, Steve Holloway presented a sort of much more extensive version of that, and then and then I'm going to sort of just show how we d have been doing it in terms of integrating licensure data, the SDMS data, the MPI, the claims, and then survey whatever else you might have. Um, so that, that's the idea. So the next one was kind, will kind of be sort of in between these two approaches. So it'll, it'll be sort of a high-level view, but it'll be a little more in the weeds about, about how you technically connect data sets to make them sort of at least begin to play well with the SDMS list. Does that make sense? Uh, yeah, it does. I, I'm just thinking that, you know, we haven't been actively doing a, a lot of this because we, we don't, haven't had to, and so I'm just thinking about the need to go back and review the previous uh, webinars. And, and there's a certain amount, there's, you know, time be it lapses between the, the webinars, so just sort of sure, being sure. prepared going into that last webinar. Um, right, uh, right, the, yeah. The, and I guess by way of disclosure, I had been contracted with Margaret in the past, and so, so we had applied some of these processes to, to the data that you have back when we were doing that originally. Yeah. So, yeah, and again, I think the, day, the, the difficulty is once you get the Medicaid claims is making sure that you've got everything but you're not getting things that you shouldn't have to have counted. That's really okay. the key. Anyone else have any thoughts, questions? I will switch back to my contact information again. I totally fine to reach out to me directly if you have questions, if you start to want to play with this and, and realize something I said doesn't make sense. Um, you know, again, a, a basic working of ac knowledge of access is to do it this way is, is handy, or any other database, you know, technology is handy. But the but the the processes being used are not really the logic can be a little convoluted, but the the database work is really pretty straightforward. Thank you, Eric. I mean, that was a very informative presentation. I personally really appreciate the detail and just going into all the different considerations that there are in preparing this information. I think, I hope people will find very useful. Uh, with that said, uh, one last opportunity. If does anyone have any questions, comments at this point in time, um, feel free to jump in. I think the only other question I would have is, uh, Eric, you've used Access uh, to do this. Do you have any 
uh, recommendations about, uh, or, or you know, um, not recommendations, but some other tools that might be equally amenable to doing this? Or yeah, I know a lot of people work in SAS, um, and that's great. You know, SAS is a very robust. You know, it's both a statistics analysis tool and also a, uh, a data management tool. So, you know, if you have someone on site that, that's comfortable in SAS, you know, what I'd say is probably give them the dummy data set or the, the, the demo data set that I provided because those lookup tables, you know, are basically what I presented in the first webinar, at least my take on what, what you would include. One other thought, which I, which you just reminded me of, is in the first presentation, I showed the code for students in organized medical teaching programs, basically. That's not one of the codes that I include, but it's in the previous webinar. That's the only other thing that sort of is not in this demo. Um, I, I don't put it in my initial set of codes because it's not differentiated by specialty. So you'll get residents, but you won't necessarily get just primary care residents and depending on whether they included something about their specialty, um, it becomes a complicated thing. I know we're supposed to count them to some degree. So that becomes sort of a slightly separate process. But otherwise, those, those lookup tables, I think, can be applied directly in SAS as well as in, in, in Access or any other database tool and, and, and will get you most of the way down the line in terms of the, the, the underlying thinking, at least from our perspective, about what should be included. And, and again, the disclaimer, this is, this is our process. This is not spelled out anywhere in policy or regulation. So this is, this is, this is the JSI derived, you know, but, but worked to some degree with, the, uh, with the, uh, the negotiated rulemaking process in the past. So it has seen the light of day, but, but it is not official, official policy, um, and maybe someday that will get developed. Well, for those of you in the audience, in case you're not familiar with our events, afterwards you will be directed to a very short evaluation survey, and we'd really just kind of like appreciate your feedback on this, this event. And, of course, um, if you have anything you'd like to see in the future, if you have any recommendations for future events, we would really appreciate that as well. But with that said, uh, once more, Eric, thank you very much. I found it to be very informative. And for those of you in the audience, um, thank you for attending. Have a good afternoon, and we hope to see you again in the future. Goodbye.